These are all going to be kind of hard questions this week. <laughs> God damn it. Because that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like hard questions. All right. Welcome to the production meeting, production crew. Oh, wow. I No warning. Just right in. Well, let's get going. I'm, I'm on okay. a timeline here. We got an let's agenda. It. If it's your first time at the production meeting, welcome to the production crew. You are now part of the production crew. This is your kind of behind the scenes look at all the magic that happens to create the insanely magical, mildly interesting people podcast as part of the production meeting. You will get a preview of potential uh, mildly interesting questions. You will get some insights into upcoming guests or thoughts that Cammie and I have about the show. And then finally, we will also share uh, stats about our growth or lack thereof, just so that we're keeping you up to date on everything that's going on with Mildly Interesting People. As always, as a member of the production crew, your feedback is critical to the success of this show. So if we say anything or you have any ideas uh, that that elicit a comment, like even if you're just like you're watching, you're like, that's bullshit. Please type that into the, to the comments because it's always nice to see those comments. The negative feedback is for me. Positive feedback for Cammy. Cammy, anything else before we get going with my meeting? I just I feel like we didn't introduce ourselves. Is that do we not introduce ourselves in the production meeting? I think the production crew knows who we are. Okay. Um, I have I have no notes so far this week, but I have a whole page here to put notes. If I have them while I'm thinking, while you're thinking so about it, can, okay, yeah, yeah. Cammy, Cammy's had a had a stressful week so not a lot of time to think about the the podcast stuff so we will forgive her for not having any production notes if you however have production notes that you would like us to include in a future meeting again we can't see you or hear you no matter how much you yell at the computer so please just type it into just the type comments. it out or or do we still have the pod inbox we have the so. pod inbox if you want to just if you want to yell at us I mean, talk to us with your voice verbally. So just I can link, link that, that up. up. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a, uh, we pushed that for a while, and I think... I don't know where we know, stopped. I would like someone to have their cat send us messages. Well, part of it is just like, I don't... Yeah, I, I don't like talking on the phone. So I don't like leaving like voicemails and that kind of stuff, and it feels like leaving a voicemail. Well, you don't have to do it, though. Well, I don't. I won't because I have the podcast. I can talk. People can hear me and see me while I'm doing my thing. Exactly. Okay. So shall we? Yeah. So first on the agenda. Oh, before we get to that, I know you're really excited. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to false start. The one thing I did want to touch on is... And this isn't a mildly interesting question, but last week, as part of the, one of the questions, I brought up the new Apple TV Plus show called Silo, and we had the opportunity to watch two episodes of Silo. What are your initial thoughts, Cammie? Um, I tweeted about this this morning, actually. Yeah. I am here for it. Yeah. It, it's, it's gritty. It's, it's dark. It's dystopian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got mystery. There's some malice happening. Um, let's not forget. I love common. And he showed up. Common did show uh, up briefly. Yeah. He showed up briefly. It was good. I, this is going to sound like I'm like, it wasn't that good. Um, it was good. And then common showed up and I got like, that was the most exciting part for me was that common showed up, but also I really love that we've got like this tough, badass woman who's like in there with like a giant wrench cranking things around and like, mm -hmm. uh, seems to be the, uh, center of, of the television series. I'm really yep. enjoying that. Didn't start there. It was almost no, like a weird kind of like prequel kind of episode. Yeah. It kind of went, there one. was like a, yes, exactly. And I assume it's all going to be drawn in together. Uh, yeah. but 
I'm enjoying it. I haven't read the books. I have heard I haven't either. that I have heard that it is a good adaptation of the books. Uh, so okay. that's exciting for people who have read them, but I yep. haven't read I haven't read them. I I'm like very the... excited. I'm upset that we have to wait like 6 days to to watch another episode. Yeah. Well, that's that's how they do the things on the Apple TV, which I it's guess almost, it's almost like I having a kid again. And I well, have to but wait. It, I it, that never clicked with me until recently because I think so often with Apple TV, even with Ted Lasso, like we didn't start watching it until they'd already released all the episodes, so we were able to just like binge it. And so yeah, the first season I, of Ted Lasso we watched straight through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Anyway, I think, I think Silo has potential. I think. Uh, Are you going the, to continue watching it with me? Yes, I think so. For now, Good. it feels. So it exciting. feels. It does feel kind of uh, Matrix e, not because of the technology, just because of like the dystopian people yeah. living underground, like they were in Zion or whatever. Um, but think of this like, no weird cocoon feeding tube situations so no yeah i find it interesting that i think so much of post-apocalyptic film and television as of late is like immediately following the apocalypse and what i like about this one is it's like 140 years have passed so people yes. don't people don't even remember like what happened like they're they're a whole new generation of people who have always just been underground and they yeah. don't really and, and are, are fully fledged adults who have got like families and yeah. like no one knows what it what it was like on the surface. And yeah. at this point, we still don't know what caused them to be in the silo or who built the right. silo. So. Right. And that's very much society. And this isn't a spoiler, but society has uh, destroyed remnants of what would help people understand. Like it's yeah. by design that people don't. It, that's not a spoiler. It's the premise of the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm glad you asked. Cool. So we'll keep watching I, that silo thing Fridays. Yeah. On can Apple we TV add? Plus. Can we add a little what we're watching segment to the production meetings? Just because it. I like that. That's a happy. good production note. Do good I need to save note. it for the production note part, or can I just say no, it now? I'm I'm writing it down. Thank you. What we're watching. What we're watching. Kunkin. Oh, yeah. We're watching Kunkin Dasner as well. Go Kunkin. You're obsessed with Kunkin Dasner today. The uh... I am obsessed with Kunkin Dasner today. Cool. And and people need to hear when they're doing a good job. I don't so I don't disagree. If you ever hear this he for some does reason, great. you're doing a great job. We dig what you're doing. So all right, let's we, move on. We support we support their Patreon, so so doing what we can, doing our part, just like on Starship Troopers. I'm doing my part. Maybe I should edit that in. <laughs> I'm doing my part. All right, no, no. Uh, <sighs> questions, production notes. Uh, oh, that's one of my production notes. The stats, and then we're out. So let's get going. Okay, let's I just do wanted it. To talk I go silo. first. Oh, yeah. So questions. If you haven't been here before, lightning round questions that uh, five questions answer off the cuff. Cammy and I will go today. off the rails because we'll like want to discuss answers or ask why, off the rails whatever, on which is fine. Train. But if you thank you, Ozzy, but if you don't want to watch all the what do we always call that exposition? If you don't want to watch the additional exposition, it comes out in a little short, which is just under a minute. And you can see questions and responses for each of us, not both of us under a minute, each of us under a minute. Under so a under minute. two yeah. minutes, you can get to, okay. You can pass, but you can't avoid. So even if you pass something, we will come back to it and, and you will have to answer it. So uh, Cami asked me first, then I asked Cami. Mildly interesting questions, or as I like to refer to it, the MIQ. 
the am I kidding? I don't. I I don't even like to refer to it that way. I just okay. find it annoying. No, so but that makes me. Time. That makes me. I I that makes me want us to do the Men in Black photo shoot even more for some reason. Nice. All right. I don't know I'm that ready. they'd be able to see my thin tie under my beard. But. I I have some styling ideas for your beard for this photo shoot. And they would be able to see your thin tie. Do I have to wear a All tie? Right. Yes. I think so. I think Does didn't what's her name wear a tie? I don't know. We'll look it up. I'm happy to wear a tie though, but I might not wear a shirt. You know who I'm talking about, right? Valkyrie. What's Valkyrie's yeah. name? Yeah. You're asking the wrong person. I would have been able to tell you her name 30 seconds ago, but now and I really like her. She's very quit stalling. She's Let's also go. No, but she's also in the punchy, punchy jab, jab. She's in, it's not Rocky, but Creed? Rocky's in it. Yes. Mm. I'm not making that up. She's the partner in Creed. She's amazing in it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Are you ready for your interesting question? I am ready. I'm on the edge of my seat, literally, so that my chair doesn't creak. Doesn't squeak. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is a throwback to a previous question. Rick, uh, yes. what made you decide that you did not want to be a doctor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for folks who watched that episode, I was going to tell this part of the story, but um, I was cut off and told I couldn't talk about it because it would come up again later. So here we are. Because right. um, this is a full question on its own. What made you decide that you did not want to be a doctor? The short answer is a, a, a spinal tap. And I don't mean the I don't mean the the mockumentary. <laughs> it goes uh, up to eleven though. Yeah, no, not that one. An actual spinal tap. So longer answer. When I was very young, thought I wanted to be a doctor, read Gray's Anatomy, had the stethoscope, had the medical bag, had all this stuff. Uh, Wait, in, you had a medical bag? Yeah, like a like a so Marcus Marcus Welby kind of black medical bag thing. Um, watched a lot of Quincy, like all that <laughs> stuff. And uh, I'm trying to remember timing wise. It must have been junior high or middle school, as they call it these days. Um, wound up with an internship with a pediatrician where I would basically follow him on rounds. I was just shadowing him. And then afterwards we'd talk about, it. he's like, Oh, we saw these conditions today and blah, blah, blah. And so, um, one of the rotations that I shadowed him on was in the, uh, Nick, you preemie, ward and there was a child who had fluid on the spine that had to have a, a a spinal tap to relieve that pressure and i passed out cold like first time i probably passed out really hard as a as a human like i'd been knocked out before like playing sports i'd been knocked out or whatever or falling off my bike or fall i fell out of a tree once and knocked myself clean the fuck out but um never had i experienced just standing there at one point and then being out and since that point in time like that was such a like triggering event that like it screwed me up with needles and all kinds of stuff so that's yeah. why i did not want to be a doctor was because that poor kid had that condition had to have that spinal tap and i i was there to watch it but thank you to the physician and to the staff and everybody who let me intern with them that was one of the most memorable opportunities i've ever had in my life and uh really influenced what what i did with the rest of my life which was not go to medical school so thank you um thank you for sharing that mm-hmm I appreciate it. I, yeah. All right. And if I seem, if I seem a little pissed, it's because we had a huge technical issue when I had started to answer that question. And so if I seem a little off, that's why it is. I'm it sorry. Twice. And, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm Rick. I'm coming back around. I'm getting back in the mood. So I just apologize if We're I seem it. a little flat. We're doing it. 
It's good. It's good. Look, you got beer. It's good. All right. Question number two. Yes. What makes you what makes you lose track of time? Editing video. <laughs> I am just like, I will go, oh, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes on this. You know, I'll come down after dinner or whatever. Like I just have to do this one thing. I have to touch up this thumbnail or whatever. And then like four hours later, I'm like, oh shit. I've been mucking Four around with this hours video. hours later. Yeah. Good answer. So, yeah, definitely that. Uh, production crew question from Mahesh. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you, Mahesh. Always appreciate your questions, and you are just too kind to keep sending them our way, even if I'm the only one who ever gets asked your questions. Well, you don't, you don't, I don't accept submissions. It's not, it's not Mahesh's fault. It's my fault. I don't accept submissions. I have far too many questions of my own. What city or town would you refuse to ever visit again? Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... told you this is a toughie this week. Uh, I find redeeming qualities about most every place I've ever been to. Um, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to slam somebody's town. Like I, I'm trying to think of somewhere where it was like either I didn't feel comfortable or I felt like unsafe for something like when I was traveling and I can't, I don't know. I think I would go back to every place I've ever been. Let me reframe it then. Let me reframe yep. it. Cause that comes, yep. this is not me calling you on shit. This is me stating a fact. You are a straight cis white man. Yes. You can go anytime, anywhere. Like, I mean, it's, it's very different for you. Is there a place that you wouldn't want me to go back to because of my safety? Is there a place that you wouldn't want someone you love to go back to? So I'm looking um, at like, I wouldn't right now. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to go back to Florida. I don't want to go to any place that like I could. Uh, yeah. I, like there are a ton of places I don't want to go right now because of the way that we're treating um, the LGBTQ community, drag queens, right. trans right. individuals. So is there a place that you are like, unless they significantly change things, I wouldn't go there. Or I wouldn't want my loved ones to be there because you're right. safe wherever, especially in the U.S. Well, almost wherever. Um, but yes, definitely in the U.S. for the most part. The, uh, you know, I've been to some countries where uh, they're very oppressive to women and and non cis folks and all that kind of thing. Like, uh, so I probably wouldn't want you to go there or like, there wasn't enough, like it was a great experience for me because I was safe, but there wasn't enough redeeming quality culturally or otherwise that it would warrant you taking that risk or being exposed to that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's absolutely fair. But I was trying to think of like if there was somewhere, and I get I'm su again to your point, super privileged, uh, you know, super cis white male heteronormative guy. Um, but yeah, that that I haven't. There's there's never. You always hear horror stories about places and like there's never I've never been any place where I'm like, oh, I didn't like that place. I don't want to go back. I think most every place I've been to, I'm like, oh, I might go back there someday. Yeah. That's a great answer in and of itself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question number four. If you were a senior correspondent for The Daily Show, what would you be the senior correspondent of? They've never really had a sportscaster on the Daily Show. They haven't. I mean, Rob Riggle seemed like he should have been a sportscaster, he but could, he wasn't. He could yeah. have been. Because politics is basically sport in a, in a certain form. 
So I, I would want to be the, the senior correspondent of professional sporting things. Excellent. I thought that was going to be a tough, you know how you have this time. So you think it's going to be like or the, a movie the reviewer. Roman Roy. What? Or a movie sorry. reviewer. Either way. Or senior movie, movie, okay. movie correspondent. Senior movie, movie critic, correspondent. Okay. Or, or sports. Excellent. I'm sorry. I interrupted you on the Roman Roy. Thing. Well, no, it just, that was one for me where like it was the Roman War- Roy or mm. Wallace oh, Wells. Oh my gosh, Wallace Wells, which was my answer. So I don't know where my brain is, where you thought it was going to be a really tough answer for me. And I was just like, Wallace Wells. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I thought that was going to be harder. I'm, I'm very excited. So uh, sports or movies. Okay. I should have known that. Okay. And then the last question for the week. Mm-hmm. Why do you hate big TVs? <laughs> I, you know, I read something that's probably not true anymore, but like TVs have to get over like 32 inches or whatever to be actually high definition, right? Like anything below that, you can't get high def. Not, mm-hmm. not they don't, they will sell you the high def feature. It's that your eyes cannot perceive any difference in the definition. Um, and I am, as, as has been well supported in this household, I am much more intrigued by the audio scape of most things than I am necessarily needing large visuals. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is because I'm like legally blind without my contacts in. And so I don't think I, I don't think I need things to be that big to enjoy them. Okay. I just had a hiccup. I don't know what. Huh. It was awful. That's weird. Sorry. Um, but I, I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate them. I'm just like, like everything in the why does Rick hate these things, it's unnecessary artifice. Like I can get it's unnecessary enough. for you. May yes. I digress into story time? Yes, please do. Uh, we've discussed in the past that Cammy loves movies and the experience of seeing movies on the big screen. Mm-hmm. So during the pandemic, one of the 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 big thing I did, I was like, I would like us to have this movie experience. So I got for our household, a big screen TV. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a great price on it. It died in the move. We had to replace it, but it was this, it was a huge, it made me feel exceptionally better to have a big TV to watch movies and things on. But I realized and acknowledged, oh, this was not like, this was the experience for me, but it, I realized that Rick did not have the same joy of the big screen TV. So for Christmas or birthday, Christmas, it was maybe, Christmas. Yeah. I got him a killer surround sound system. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I would love the surround sound system as much as I do, especially um, I have hearing problems and especially in it. We have a, we have moved our television to a smaller room. So we have a small dedicated room for watching TV so that we can live our life in the other rooms without being um, dedicated to the television at all times, which was a problem in both of our childhoods. Right. In that room, all it is, is it's a big couch, a big TV and an ottoman and a surround system. And so when we sit down now and we watch a movie, we get the big screen experience, but we also get the rumble on the couch. Um, And that has been, it's the reason I'm okay. Not going to movie theaters. Well, and it has completely honest. Yeah, it has blackout curtains too, so it feels very much like a theater. That experience. yeah, I, I put blackout curtains in there because I wanted to be able to yep. close everything up. And oh, anyway, thank you for answering that question. You're um, welcome. Because that was a very giving answer. You were like, "It's not that I hate them; it's that it doesn't work for me because of this." So thank you. Right. You're welcome. You continue to impress. Hmm. I accept your answers. We need to move on. That's all five. That was all five. See, painless. It's not painless. It's always painful. I'm just clearly developing a callus that is making it less painful. It's not blistering anymore. It's just 
hardening a callous, Thank callous you. person. Um, okay. So now it's time for me to ask Cammy questions. And I don't know. There's something in the water. I knew He's I was going to be angry today. I knew I was going to be angry about a technical glitch. I have questions that I think are challenging, but. I think it's because he talked to one of my childhood friends Bef- before we recorded this. We recorded an episode with a person that I've known since I was 12. That that Brick had never had the opportunity to meet before. And now he's like, Cammie is too coddled. People have been coddling her her entire life. Let's ask hard questions. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> so not it. I'm so coddled still. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Are you ready? Question no. number one. Question number one. You're starting a food cart. What is the one dish that you cook that brings people back time and time again? Breakfast fried rice. Breakfast fried rice. You're going to have to get up at like 3 a.m. to run that food cart. You can eat breakfast any time of the day. But people usually want breakfast at breakfast time, too. I usually want breakfast around 11 a.m., but okay. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, Question two. This could take, you may need to pass and come back to this one. I'm just warning you. I just, I'm really happy about this question. You're happy about this question? Yeah, and we had discussed, and we had discussed MTV television shows before when we discussed Beavis and Butthead, which is what inspired this one. It wasn't, an MTV show per se. They just played it. That's where I encountered it. First of all, very interested. Who would you cast in a reboot of the young ones? The young ones. Talking about the young ones. Uh, That's an incredibly, incredibly challenging question i have one answer right off the cuff yeah i would like to cast mike yeah pedro pascal huh he seems like mike to you the he the the no i just want to see the straight laced i want to see what he would do with the character i think he would make it incredible Hmm. um neil Neil's the hippie. Neil's the hippie. Lentils. Mm, lentils. Um, I can't remember. Is it okay if I don't know the people's names and I just sure. tell you who they are? Or just okay. tell us characters. Okay, so the guy from Bones, who's also one of the writers from Bones, but played Dr. Sweets. He was absolutely fantastic. He played this, like, super young uh, FBI psychiatrist that I thought was Is that the kid from Freaks and Geeks? Yes, from Freaks and Geeks. I would love to see him with, like, the long hair and just, like, like embody the the whole hippie movement. So we've got Mike, we've got Neil. Um, Vivian. Yes. The redheaded oh, anarchist. The anarchist punk. Uh-huh. You know who I want for that one. Who? Ron Weasley. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. He'd be good. Gosh, can I just say can I just say Rupert Grint then? Because that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, Literally. I thought he'd be I thought he'd be really good at that. Just based on his performance in Servant. Yes, that's exactly yeah. like the second you said it. Well, I was and like, the okay. and the knock on the cabin door, or whatever that one was. He was oh gosh, yeah. that you didn't like that movie. You made no, but me I pay. Like, you made I me like pay the, for that movie. Like, like the, <laughs> the twenty bucks. I guess that's the for, twenty bucks because I was like, I want. I think we own it now. <laughs> Hooray! I will watch it again and again because Dave okay. Bautista. Um. Okay. Mm, oh, what's the guy's name that I can't stand? He was dropped dead. Rick. 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 Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually his name too. That's the funny. It is. Name. It's Rick Mayall. Rick, is his Rick actual Mayall. name and yeah. his character's name. Yep. Rick. But it's Rick with just a K. Rick. Kim Jong. 
Ken Jong. Yes, because I want to see what Rick? they do with it. Yeah. He does like uh he he's super funny, but he also does the whole like I'm so better than you. So well. I think that, that he would be a fantastic Rick. I stand by I mean, I know who I'm I, I stand by my casting as, okay. as Ken Jong. Good job. Um, am I missing anyone? No, they had like recurring characters, but those are the primary four. Okay. She I've always bald, wanted Vinny the, I've always wanted Vinny Jones to come in as the bald landlord. Cool. So there's your bonus casting. Excellent. And Emma Thompson should come back as Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson started as a comedic actress. Not a lot she of people did. know that. She was I don't in know the why she was she in was, the she was brilliant. And she was, I always remember her when they do the, uh, what do they call that? The, the debate, it's not debate club, but it's like, the, it's the same thing. Like the, that the was trivia, a hard question. The trivia club, like on Spider-Man, like that group, Yeah. like yeah. they do the competing colleges and it's the young ones against the like preppy kids. She was, yeah. she was getting that one. Um, wow. That was a great question. Is incredibly difficult. I feel like given more time, I would cast it very differently, but that's my off the cuff casting. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like your Mount Rushmore question. You can come back. to. I've answered that 20 times since then. I have so much thought. Okay. Cool. Uh, Question number three, you can only drink tea. You can only drink tea one way the rest of your life. Is it hot or is it iced? But I can drink other things either way. Yeah, just tea. You can only have it hot or you can only have it iced. So some inside information for all of you. Tea is one of my favorite things. I drink hot tea every morning. I tend to drink iced tea every afternoon during the summer. I don't even drink hot tea. Uh, I think I would say hot because there are so many other iced beverages that I can enjoy and there's nothing like a warm cup of tea. But that's an, an unfair question and I feel... Attacked. I feel like I feel attacked. <laughs> that, that was That's a great a answer. Really, yeah, it's a great question. I don't like it, but it was a great cool. question. I'm writing it down. Great question this week. Cool. Uh, this is so. Cammy has the "Why do you hate?" that she asked me. My new recurring is the Seinfeld esque "What's the deal?" So your "What's the deal?" question this week is what's the deal with white walls i don't quite understand the question because you have a really hard time with plain white walls like you always have to put something on them you have to paint them you have to like a plain white wall seems to drive you completely apeshit which is Funny to me. Because, Look behind her. Look behind her right no, now. No, I know. There's it's all, shit it's all, white. all yeah, over the walls. Art. I don't like blank spaces necessarily. In the bedroom, I like to have lots of white wall. But there are also white art pieces hanging in the bedroom. <laughs> this entire fucking wall over here that you all can't see is completely empty. And to be honest, Likely story. it's driving me crazy. This entire see? wall over here that you can't see is empty. And it's driving me crazy. They are making me nuts. They're making me nuts. It's not just white walls. Any solid colored wall. I want to hang art on it. I want to hang art. I want so much art. We had these neighbors when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I remember the woman's name was Vicky. I can't remember the dude's name. So it was probably Rick because apparently I don't remember people. Can't remember Rick. Rick. Uh, And they had art hanging on literally every space available. It was like hoarders for pictures. Every single inch of like their Victorian walls. level kind of like frames yes. and stuff. Up yeah. the stairs in all like yeah. and and like it wasn't good art. It was just like everywhere. Yep. It was photos of like and then like there was pictures of fish and then there was like drawings of a shrub and and I was like overwhelmed, but also like what an amazing functional use of your wall space. Like, I think that there's this part of me that's a hoarder Uh that I don't want to exist that I'm like, 
but art is pretty. And I want people to be able to walk through a room and be like, yes. Oh, I want to feel like I'm in an art gallery at all times. And I think Mm -hmm. that's what it is. The blank white walls make me feel unsettled and unfinished. Like no one cared about them. (laughs) And there's a fine balance between like getting the art on the wall and having it be beautiful and then having an open negative space. And I haven't found that balance yet. And I'm working really hard. Rick is very comfortable with negative space. Very. I'm very very comfortable with negative in general. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a big balance. Like I, the only art that's hanging in this room are these two things that you can see right here, this entire dining room, no art. I want to panel an entire wall with this stuff that we got from Greece. <laughs> and it's looking... like, stop, stop. I was, I was looking at the, the wall back there and I was like, what is that red dot on the wall? And then I realized it's the recording. <laughs> that's the recording. Thing. Yeah. I had that problem yeah. earlier. I was like, I wanted to. They can't see it, but like right above this piece and below mm-hmm. this piece over mm-hmm. to the side, right there is a little red dot and it drives me crazy. Oh, yep. And the, this is, this is, this is one of the first pieces of art that I ever bought. That was like a, I actually, I, I bought it at a gallery showing Yeah. and then that was a, this, that was a gift from my daughter from uh-huh. a Portland Saturday market artist. And this was a gift from my dear friend, Tammy. Um, yep. Because uh, this entire room is full of anatomical hearts in case you didn't know. Yes. I feel attacked. Clearly, again. Why are clearly you... stylized hearts behind you as well. So I like hearts a lot. That's I love, a good, I like hearts. That's a, that's a good answer. Thank you for, I feel giving really us, stressed out right now. Giving, <laughs> giving us some insight into your triggered white wall world. Okay. Last one. Unfortunately, even though it's question it's five. It's not even I'm, easier, right? I'm worried it's going to be difficult. No. Nah, pass. This one. No. Okay. So let's, you passed. So let's go What's to the, the last question. question. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it might, I think I would. You already kind of mentioned it earlier in the question, so let's just get into it, see what happens. Are you ready for your final question? Okay. I've got my fussy right. pillow. Let's do it. All right. Star-Lord, Mantis, Drax, Gamora, Groot, Nebula, or Rocket? Any contacts on what I'm picking? Those are all the Guardians of the Galaxy currently. I, I know who they are. It it you just have to pick one that you could okay, probably I'm gonna go you with could probably hang out with like Drax. okay see that's what I figured I thought you might have difficulty between Drax and Groot or I maybe did. Drax and Ra- Rocket my three finalists were Drax Groot and Rocket so you know me mm-hmm. well you yep. know me very well mm-hmm. um it, it probably gets down to Drax or Rocket in the end Groot kind of gets. I am Groot. I, I am Groot. I am Groot. Mm-hmm. I love Groot, but he's a teenager for a, a, a significant portion of the series. And, and yeah, if you've raised a teenager, you you don't need an extra one right now. So, um, I have a, a great, great fondness for Dave Batista. Yep, he's already come um, up once. And yeah, it's a double Dave Batista episode. And I also, I also do, I, I like Bradley Cooper, not nearly as much as I like Dave Bautista. Um, and yep. I think raccoons are adorable, but once a raccoon chased me, um, it was not the raccoon's fault. It was my fault. It was broad daylight and I was walking to pick my daughter up from school and there was mm-hmm. a raccoon out in the middle of the broad daylight in someone's front yard. And I stopped to look at the raccoon and was like, that's so interesting. Why is there a raccoon out right now? And then she charged me. And I found out later that she had a, a, a couple of little baby raccoons that she was protecting. And when I stared at her, it, I guess, freaked her out. And then she chased me and I ran. And then I thought there was a snake and I tried to jump over it and I screamed. It wasn't a snake. It was a stick. Um, and that's why I'm not choosing Rocket. What are raccoon babies called? Kits? I think so. 
That sounds right. I can't remember. Yeah. I would call them cubs if I didn't know any better. So. Yeah, I don't think it's cub. I think it's a kid. No, I think it's. I mean, I think it is kid. Okay. Echo, what are baby raccoons called? A young raccoon is called a cub or a kid. A cub or a kid. Okay. We're both. So we're both right. Excellent. Excellent. Whew, double okay. Win. There's double there's, double Dave Batista double win. All right. There's fuzz on my hat. Uh, oh, it's also I, double Bradley Cooper though, because you mentioned The Hangover. Yeah, so I have checked off each of your questions as having received responses. They are being archived away in the repository of mildly interesting questions. I don't I don't know that there are any that are appropriate. Food cart could be interesting as a guest. I question. do think the food cart, if you had a food cart that specialized in one food, what would it be? Yeah. I like that question. Cool. I just don't want to wind up with too many food questions because we've we've thought of a couple think, other potential. I think food it would questions. replace any other food question. Okay, questions are done. Time to get to the production meeting. Cami, beyond the what we watching, do you have any other production notes for today? As the talent, mm, no. As the talent, no. But as a person who does pay attention to some metrics, yes. What question do you have? I find that our reels, our shorts do incredibly well on Facebook and I do nothing to make that happen. It's just huh. that when I post things, when either of us post things on Instagram, they get fed up to the Facebook pool. And for some reason we get like tons of views on the Facebook shorts. Huh. And I just wanted and you to know have, you have and, no and bring up again. Is. I'm not sure why that is. It might be because we have more Facebook connections. I'm not sure what that is exactly because I'm not doing anything specific to promote them. But Facebook keeps like serving this thing up to me. Oh, look, look how well this did. It's mm -hmm. so shiny and pretty. Would you like Congratulations. to Congratulations. You, like you to got a more? thousand views. Which makes me ponder. I know. Mm -hmm. I think we've asked the people before. Do we, we did ask last to? week. We I'm not a huge Facebook response. person. So what do you think, Rick? Do we want to do a Facebook page? I think it would be better to put our know. time and energy into just actually making a website. Mm. I don't know if you know what a website is. It's this place on the internet Sounds that you cool. go. And it's like a it's like a home page or a landing spot for a specific Can topic I get an email? Or thing. Can I get an email there? You could. We could page? use we could Sweet. use the domain to get you email if you'd like. Nice. I like email. I don't. So you think we should build a site and not worry about we you think we should build a site that we have to get people to visit rather than building something where people clearly already seem to be engaged. Am I hearing that correctly? I know it sounds counterintuitive, but what I'm saying is this: the Facebook Just shorts asking. are doing their own thing. And while, yes, it might be interesting to have a Facebook home, mm -hmm. I don't think that it would really increase our viewership or give people any additional information. I think it would be another place for people who are already seeing things on Facebook to see things. I think a, if we if we actually spent the time I... to make our own site, that it would be a place that we could lead all paths, right? This is what we are about, a consolidated message of what this show is and what we're doing. And then mm -hmm. we can feed people to anything that they might be interested in, be it audio, be it long form video, short form video, medium form video. I, 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 I think that's a, okay. I think that's that. That's that. Yeah. Of my, I don't know that I'm right. Those are just my thoughts. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> The one part I'm wondering about is something we we just Sorry. we just touched on is uh, we often don't get responses or engagement in YouTube comments, and so part of my thinking was like if there was a space for engaging and commenting, that might be beneficial. That's all I was thinking. Anything that people are more likely to engage in that on Facebook than on a site. I don't disagree with you. Potentially. I mean, that's what they're there to do. So that was my only question. People on Facebook are more likely to talk, I guess. 
Why not so both? We can do both. Just something to think about. I don't know. I don't know if it would be valuable or not. Uh, since we're already on stats, again, as Cammy mentioned, for whatever reason, the reels seem to be doing really well, even though we don't really promote them there. We just kind of post them. Uh, so that's interesting. And maybe if this comes through as a reel, maybe comment why you like watching the reels on the Facebooks. Um, I'm just going to note that I'm, I've spent a lot of today's recording time just nodding and agreeing because we've mm -hmm. been having some awful audio difficulties and I have no idea what you just said. Cool. So should I keep going or yes, do you please. want me to keep, shut no, it down going. again? All right. No, keep going. Um, so you're not a robot right now. It was just while, while we're on, while we're on stats, uh, let's get to the stats for you. So currently on YouTube, uh, 226 subscribers. Thank you. Teach and everyone Thank you, 226 who, people. who subscribed. We really appreciate I, it. And I mean, 224 people. I'm one Rick's one. So to, thank you to 224 people. So, and really the next milestone we're targeting there is 250. So we're inching ever closer to the, to the 250 mark. And then, um, over the last 28 days, we've had 40,000 views on our videos and 300. Is that good? I, I mean, it's 40,000 views in 28 days. So that's about 10,000 views a week, which feels okay. pretty, pretty good. I mean, from a blogging perspective, that would feel like good engagement. Okay. So I think it's okay. It would. You're right. If I were blog, yeah. Well, I don't know why I don't think about it that way. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. It's just a different kind of content and people engaging with it. And then on the audio podcast, waiting for the screen to load, we are at 962 downloads. So edging ever closer to the 1,000 downloads. What if next week we hit both 1,000 downloads and 200 And 250? That would be crazy. How do we celebrate that? We'll probably do another video. People like the celebrating small wins kind of video things. I like celebrating small wins, so I'm down with that. Cool. So yeah, that's where we are stat wise. Uh, I feel a little bit better this week than I did last week. Last week views were way down for some reason, and we couldn't figure out why. We thought maybe it was the nice weather sunshine. or something. But so much sunshine. Um, we're continuing to just kind of slowly but surely tick up on the on the stats and uh people seem to like the new not short not long video format so we'll mildly continue mildly interesting moments yes we'll continue to test the mildly interesting moments there's another one so we now have released two i can't tell you how the second one's doing because it is released in the future but in the past when you're watching this so it's confusing in the future it's like we have a time machine. This is episode like is our machine. time machine. It really is. We're we're in the future right now talking to you, but the thing now in the past has not yet happened in our future. It's like we're in a multiverse of sorts. Um, I just, how did I not come up with Rupert Grant on my own for Vivian? <laughs> I don't know. It's so obvious. It's so obvious now that you so say it. Obvious. I just, I'm very disappointed in my behavior. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. Like it, we got there. It's all good. Thank you for uh, your assistance. The other thing I've been testing on, um, YouTube is new thumbnail. Like I've been trying to like declutter the thumbnails so that they're just like really straightforward. Like this is what it is. Or like, this is something somebody said during the video. So if you have any comments on the YouTube thumbnails and whether they're working or they're not working, let me know because I'm always trying to make it more compelling to people to engage with the content. So that's the other production note. What are you doing next to the mic, Cammy? I was opening the curtain. I see. 
quietly on top of the mic. So uh, that's all. That's all I have for production this week. And we oh, let's talk about. Uh, I'm sorry, upcoming guests. So as we mentioned, like lots of shorts. Uh, the mildly interesting moment released on Sunday afternoon. If you want to go check out that format, there are a couple of those uh, next week, next week, this week, this Thursday, we will release an episode with a budding comedian who's test driving some new a material. A comedian. Yep. Kind of, kind of that, that weird Al kind of vibe. Um, so I have that conversation, getting that one edited. We'll have that posted in a couple of days for you. We'll continue to post shorts and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then a um, couple other uh, episodes already in the can that I need to, that I need to edit. So we're starting to stack up a little bit of material because Cammy needs to take a trip and may not be here to record. Um, so there's that too. I'm, I'm also super excited about the next person that we record with. Oh, do you even, do you know who the next person is? I do not. It's Mars. <laughs> no. Nice. I'm very right. excited. Yeah. Yeah. So good, uh, good run of guests. We've had a good run of guests the whole time, but, um, good run of guests that we're trying to pack in here so that we have a little breathing room for if folks need to be out of town or whatever. Cool. Anybody. I mean, if, in case you guys go out of town, we don't want to cause problems for you. Right. So it's fine. You can't, you can't always get to the YouTubes when you want to, or you can't, you can't just look at your phone and be like, Oh, there's a new podcast episode from the mildly interesting people. It's a shame. Speaking of, if you're traveling, we hope we can provide you some entertainment during your people seem to be traveling again, like that stuff's happening, lots of travel. So, well, you know, the World Health Organization has declared COVID over. Well, thank goodness. I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of feelings and thoughts about this, but we're not going to discuss them right now. This is a production meeting, cool. not Cammy's opinions on the World Health Organization's status of COVID 19. So, Questions done, silo recap done, stats done. Done. Oh, how many how many people on Instagram? We didn't tell folks how many people on Instagram. I don't uh, regularly check it. Let me let me just and one moment. tweaking tweaking the thumbnails on YouTube. Those were the only production notes I had. And given that we've already interviewed somebody today, my voice is starting to go. Do, do, do. I don't know how many followers we had last time, but 203. Mm-hmm. We have 203 followers. Okay, cool. So if you're, if you're a fan of the Instagrams, we're mildly interesting people. All one word, no in underscores or anything. We're mildly interesting everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Mildly interesting. That reminds <laughs> me of the, uh, who is it? There's somebody who that's always their username. Kimberly. Kimberly everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Need to get her on to talk rabbits. She's on my list. Cool. All right, folks. Uh, Happy Tuesday. Hope it's going well for you. You made it. Happy future Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, you already survived Monday, so it's all downhill from here. And then, uh, hello, fluff. You know, and then there's Thursday. You can't wait till Thursday because what happens on Thursday? That's right. You meet another wildly interesting guest that we have to show you. So if you don't want to miss out on that, hit subscribe. Subscribe. We'll, we'll send that thing to you. And if when, you can, when it's, when it's if ready. you got it, just get, I would love it if you liked this video. If you liked the video, if you didn't like the video, you don't have to do anything. If you dislike the video, you can, you can thumbs it down. I don't, I don't like that you do that but i understand and respect if you need to um but yeah if you like it give us a little like and subscribe yeah all right i'm gonna go see if i can convince him that we should have fish and chips instead of burgers all right that sounds like a a good discussion to have so we'll go do that we'll talk to y'all later thanks for coming
Bye.